Hi, I'm Lisa Kirshner. This is my apartment. This is my dog, Hartley. And this is my Kickstarter campaign, supporting my forthcoming memoir, Hello, American Lady Creature, What I Learned as a Woman in Cutter. Actually, I learned a lot of things. Before I moved there, I couldn't have found the place on a map. So I'm going to front load the moral of this story for you. We're not as different as you think. I wouldn't have believed it either. I mean, when I became head of marketing for Carnegie Mellon University in Cutter, I was going to set an example for the women there. I mean, the job was kind of beside the point. My real objective was to write witty essays about what happened while I was there, setting an example. My American journalist husband, well, he wanted to write about the place too. Perfect. Except we were in shock. I mean, firstly, there was no there there. Never had been. Qatar had been a barren wasteland for most of recorded history. There was no tradition of cuisine or theater or literature. But this enormous influx of wealth over the past decade had brought in huge changes. Cranes and scaffolding dotted the sky. It was more an impression of what was coming than an actual skyline. At the turn of the 21st century, Qatar was like the Wild West. Anything could happen and often did, from a suicide bombing to an Olympic sporting event to secret sexual excesses. And it was all against this backdrop of lavish spending. It was an effervescent frenzy of becoming everything on the verge of becoming something else, the exact opposite of Zen. And life was like that too. I mean, sure, I was bringing the university education to the masses, but there were yet to be any bookstores in anywhere in Qatar. My other half and I, we grew despondent. I'd made a three-year commitment to the university, but quickly realized we weren't going to make that. He left to uh, the States to look for a job. I stayed behind to tidy things up and make my exit as strategic as possible, given the circumstances. But a couple of weeks after that, he called to tell me he'd actually changed his mind. It wasn't Cutter he was quitting. It was us. And so my four-year marriage ended over the telephone. Now, since, since I'd been planning to leave, I didn't have a lot of resources on the ground. I was flattened. It took months before I was able to tell anyone, and then only in secret. It wasn't like I thought I was going to pretend it into not having happened. It was more that beyond failing in my own life, I had failed feminism. I mean, there I was living in a land where women were valued primarily as wives and mothers. And I was the one who had gotten the job that took us there. I was running a department. I was the primary breadwinner in a patriarchal culture. Except, well, I, I wasn't really those things anymore. What I was was a freshly minted divorcee in a land where it was illegal to date. But that's when things got interesting. I saw that by mere virtue of being a, a female American expat, I was like an alien being. I could get away with practically anything. And that's, oddly enough, also when I began to realize that the cutter around me, the, the values, the norms, weren't so different from my own. And I actually had a lot to learn about claiming my feminine power from cuttery women. What it took to get me to realize all that, well, that's the gist of the book, so I'm not going to give it away. But I do want to tell you this. The reason I want to share this story is because it's in essence about how we're all the same. Cutter wasn't the opposite of Zen. It was more like Zen boot camp. Everything's changing all the time, everywhere. Yet there are these constants. We all want to feel loved, feel needed, feel cared for. The surprising secret I learned in Cutter is that it's much easier than I ever dreamed possible. And if that dream can come true for me, it can come true for you. Thank you for helping me.